It's a long hold on the start. There's a lot of noise, a lot of distractions. The band going by, the music, the noise from the bank, but the crews are focused. That really committed off the blocks there from the Germans on the inside there on the Bucks Berks Station. You know, trying to get off and trying to rattle, you know, the much favoured Kiwis for this particular race who were the World Cup winners recently in Poznan. So, you know, trying to put them under pressure. Uh, get in front and you know the steering issue here from the Kiwis. Yeah, New Zealand has wandered off their station now. It's easily done. You steer away from the island because the island comes out towards you. John Hedger, the umpire, has got the uh, white flag out. They responded quite quickly, moved back towards their station. John Story in the bow seat is probably doing the steering, probably just making sure the boat's going where it should. Though, and a double, of course, Chris Harris in the bow in the stroke seat will be able to make sure he helps as well. But that's such a common thing on that side of the state, on that station. You know, the island seems to draw you out and push you out into the middle. And then you always see crews kind of like dash back towards the booms as they get safe inside them. And that's what this Class C New Zealand double have done, actually. They drifted out, then they've got back on the station, got into position now. As they look right out down that stern behind them, they're looking for it to go straight, not to bounce, and to create a nice line of water back towards the steering markers behind the, uh, the start pontoons. We have a look in there at... Steinhuber and Rommelman moving as well as they can. Yeah, and it's all about just having composure, standing in your bubble, not getting flustered by the other crew. And the Kiwis have done that exceptionally well there. Yeah, the Kiwis are doing that, starting to move out, get a little bit of clear water, which will make them feel a bit better after that st slightly uh, unnerving start, really, having to make that correction and get steered by the umpire. But um, they're a very good double, the New Zealanders. But it's always tricky racing at this time of day. This is kind of, you know, prime time in the evening session. The grandstands are packed. The river's packed with boats. And just the uncomfortable, you know, how uncomfortable it is underneath the boat. You know, there's lots of wash. And just being prepared that you're going to get knocked off every now and then and not get flustered by it is really important. That's right. And they're handling the conditions well. We've seen them being warned again by John Hedger. Steer back towards that Buckinghamshire station. Again, they've responded. John Hedges were able to put that flag down, but I think they're coming back again from that shot, letting themselves drift back towards the middle. It's not going to be long before he has to steer them back on. And here he goes with the flag, steering them back towards their station. They're trying to get a little advantage by setting some puddles down onto the crew from Würzburg and Kreifelder. So we have a look there. Chris Harris in the stroke seat, very experienced double Olympian. In London 2012, he was in the four. In Rio, he's in the double skull with Robbie Manson, who's now doing the single. And it's a shame Robbie's not going to be racing this week, you know, with the injury that he picked up with that kind of performance we saw recently in Poznan where he broke the world record, which was, you know, we were talking about the men's German eight, and to be honest, I was more, most impressed with that singles performance. It was mind-blowing, to be honest. Absolutely. Two weeks ago, these crews raced in Poznan, and this double skull were the World Cup winners on that occasion. And, yeah, we're talking about Chris Harris's former double skull partner Robbie Manson who managed to move a single skull 2,000 meters in six minutes 30 quite incredible and set a new world best time and I had the privilege of being able to commentate on that the privilege here of being at Henley look at this great display and Mark what's going right in this New Zealand double it's just the efficiency you kind of see them moving together it's quite tricky out there with the bouncy water but just the way they're collecting the water together leaving the handle out there and just pressing you know, it's all about efficiency, especially in this boat class. Well, it looks efficient. They're moving pretty well. I think we could... Uh, we want to look for that efficiency. We want to look for how well the blades get buried. We have a look here at the German double. And just seeing how well they move together. Looking at this shot, it looks like there's only one person in the boat. It looks like it's a single. That's got to be good, hasn't it? And that's the thing. That's what you want. You just want one blade basically going in the water. So they're in unison together. And you could have just a shot before where you saw the German boat just... The blaze just kind of waving in the air a little bit, not being really direct and placing them in the water where this combination, you can see it's like bang, it's straight in the front. And they've again let themselves wander off the station, come towards the middle. John Hedger now a little bit happier to leave them in the middle of the course because they've opened up enough of a gap. And that's what you tend to see on these Henley races. So you see them sculling now, just looking at the way they... Drop the wrists, drop those blades out of the water. Chris Harris had a bit of trouble in Rio with Tina Sinovitis. So um, 
just when we get that close-up shot of his wrist, I'm going to try and have a look and see, does he roll it out into his fingers enough, or is he cocking that wrist a little yeah, bit too much? Probably gripping too hard a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but I think... A bit harsh, that one, but... Training at Carapiro, gets a bit bumpy sometimes, you end up holding onto those blades pretty hard. Should be good at handling them, that's why I look at it. If you're used to run on rough water, this would be perfect. And if you have a look at this picture on the left there, you can see the pleasure boats are all coming out now. I think they might even be the singing Elvises, who uh, I've seen out and about on the Henley course. A boat full of people dressed up as Elvis. The, the songs are booming out, and they're entertaining the crowd and making for this whole very special atmosphere. And that's it, it's the carnival festival atmosphere we have at Henley, and that's what adds to making it so special to race here. You know, you've got thousands of people on the bank, you know, watching the racing, enjoying the pins and champagne. And that's what you love with the close racing that comes into this kind of section race, which unfortunately we're not going to get. But I'm sure in this boat class tomorrow, you've got the French lightweight Olympic champions that won earlier on today facing the Kiwis, and that will be a great matchup. That will be a great matchup tomorrow. The German crew we're looking at here, we've got uh, former lightweight in the stroke seats, Rommelman. He raced in the lightweight men's single at World Cup in Poznan, finished in 13th place. His partner, Steen Huber, under 23 international since 2010. But um, as you say, tomorrow we're going to get to see that French double, who I've got to say I think are technically one of the best crews I've ever seen, um, up against this New Zealand double who are going to have that little edge of power. But it'll be a great matchup to watch that one. Power against technique, I guess. Yeah, and, and Henley, you know, it's, it's special, it's unique for that instance, you know, it's a it's a longer race, so we'll just see how the lightweights can get on, hopefully there's no win tomorrow, so they can really show their stuff against the heavyweights. And in those situations, you've got myself, Greg Cern, and Mark Hunter in the commentary box, I know who I'll be cheering for, and I know who you'll be cheering for, as we see the crews coming past the progress board, it marks about eight strokes to go, for me it was always the final sprint into the line, and this New Zealand double, Put on a fantastic display as they're able to take that look over his shoulder. John Story takes a look over his shoulder. He knows the finish line's there. They can relax. Enjoy this moment as they cross the finish line and wait for the double skull from Würzburg and Krefelder make its way over the line. That confirmation of the result, a win for Story and Harris over Steinhuber and Rubelmann from Germany. off the start we saw a German boat really getting quickly up the slide and onto the next stroke moving nicely together and the New Zealanders really got off the station they're gonna have to make sure they don't do that tomorrow because they can't afford to get make any mistakes I think when they come up against that fantastic French lightweight double tomorrow yeah and that was exactly what the Germans were trying to just put them under pressure um, but the Kiwis just have so much speed um, speed that we didn't see in the uh, Lions game this morning, unfortunately. Yeah, for our friends out there in New Zealand who might be watching this, you stayed up very late. Um, I imagine you might be being kept up by the uh, the British Lions supporters who might still be partying, celebrating that big win. Um, now we've leveled the series. We're all looking forward to that next weekend. But this weekend now it's all about Henry Royal Regatta, the semi-finals, and then the finals, which will be on tomorrow. And hopefully we won't be seeing New Zealand coming home first next weekend. We're seeing a different result. But there it was, a good celebration for the double from New Zealand ahead of the German double here.